Why all the all the crazy stuff happen while I'm at work? I mean, I'm off work tomorrow. The White Sox could have waited till tomorrow to fire Fe- Pedro Grafal. We're going to talk about this firing, man, and, and what's up next for the White Sox. Who should the next coach be? We'll get right into it right after the intro. To the number one place for all Chicago baseball. Let's start the show. All right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Chicago White Sox Central. It's your boy, Big Broski. Y'all already know, hit us up at 773-389-6954 or Chicago Baseball Central at gmail.com. We're going to get right into it. Listen, ain't no secret. The doggone White Sox fired Pedro Grafal right after I just said, leave the man alone. Let him go down with the ship. I honestly don't think he deserves a paid vacation after the last two seasons of baseball. After he stepped in to take over for um, uh, Tony La Russa, who stepped down due to health concerns, and the White Sox fell apart uh, that season uh, when they were supposed to be contenders, and then the following season to just be terrible and lose 100 games to see t- players like Tim Anderson get punched in the face at, in front of his own town fans and all that stuff, man. And, and to trade away all your good players, it leads to this, uh, a, a season in which the team, did, they haven't even won 30 games yet. And it's only about 45 games to go in a season. So that just goes to show you how terrible the team was under Pedro Gafal. So, like, I understand why they fired this man. But, he, you know, he had an 89 and 190 record. That is terrible. But come on, man. It's too easy. He was supposed to sit through this terrible team like the rest of us until the end of September. That's it. Then you let him go. You fire a person like this after the season you don't let him take a paid vacation he probably already in cancun sipping my ties feeling good about himself this is with the rest of the million dollars they owe him for this season like and probably for they got to pay him probably next season too so how, how how dare they fire this man jesus let the man go down with the stinking ship that he he was a part of of, of setting sail I don't know what's wrong with them. They, they even get firing people wrong. This is how bad the team is. Like, no, nobody wanted, I mean, obviously, everybody wanted to see Pedro Grafal get fired. But nobody should have wanted to see him get fired today, at, 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 at August 8th, with, with the, the two-thirds of the season already gone. What's the purpose? Now you got uh, uh, Grady Sizemore, who I'm sure is going to do a great job, and we're going to see him lead the White Sox to an above 500 record to finish the season. You can bank on it. They're going to play inspired and motivated for this guy so that he can, you know, uh, uh, audition to become a manager elsewhere or even here for this team. But the reality is Pedro Grafal does not deserve a paid vacation. Plain and simple. White Sox were on, uh, on a pace to lose 100 games for the second time in a row. That's crazy. 21 straight losing, uh, 21 straight games lost until they won the other day, and they starting a new losing streak. They're probably going to lose two to the Cubs. But now that they've had this changing of the guard, so to speak, because they also fired uh, the bench coach, Charlie Montoya, third base coach, Eddie Rodriguez, and assistant hitting coach, Mike Tosar. They should have fired Chris Getz, too, because he's the one that's acting like he's not a, at fault for this. Didn't get anything back really for Dylan Cease. Didn't get a chance to trade Gary Crochet or Luis Robert Jr., your two best pieces. Like, Chris Getz, you're not in the, the clear either, my guy. I know this is your first full season as general manager, but the things that you've done as general manager hasn't really been good, including firing Pedro Grafal today. You, if you were going to fire him, you should have fired him after the 14-game losing streak earlier this season. Like, why wait until the second week of August to fire somebody in a in a season that's already far gone. The White Sox can go undefeated for the rest of the season and still finish below 500. So stop it, Chris Getz. Somebody was a myriad of factors. When he, he said, uh, when you look into at the two, this is his quote, when you look at the 2023 season and 2024 season, winning projections, win-loss projections, and how dramatically below we were in the win column, there was underperformance, duh. Chris Getz went on to say there was some misalignments along the way, some different belief systems, and there was a lack of production overall. Duh, again. You look at how many games that we've led early and weren't able to finish or how many games we haven't been able to come back to get a win, obviously something was broken. Yeah, 
clearly something was broken, but you're part of it. You're part of the problem, Chris Getz. You're going to have to convince me that you are not part of the problem by going out there and making moves. If you're still trying to move Gary Crosset this offseason, there's no reason he should be pitching this weekend versus the Chicago Cubs. What's the point? To get butts in the seat? Like, people are going to come regardless, whether it's Chicago Cubs or White Sox fans. There's no reason for Gary Crochet to be going out there pitching anymore this season if you're trying to pit, trade him in the offseason. Luis Robert Jr., can you offload him this offseason? We're going to see. We're going to see. Manny Moncado, I mean, uh, um, what I keep calling this man, Manny Moncado. But Moncado, he's, he's been office. I mean, he's been uh, been terrible. Now, 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 let's be honest. For for Pedro Griffal, uh, Yoan Moncada, there it is. Um, Pedro Griffal came into a situation where going into last season, the White Sox were expected to be much better than they were. Now, they did suffer injuries, your typical um, injury to uh, the, to Big Baby, um, Aloy Jimenez. Uh, Moncada went down with an injury as well. Luis Robert Jr. also missed time. We had pitchers in and out of the lineup. So, obviously, last season – even though they lost 100 games, it was like, okay, no, nah, there was no excuse last season. There's definitely no excuses this season for what, for even with all the injuries. Andrew Vaughn hasn't done anything. Ben Attendee hasn't done anything. Like, no, no. There are no excuses for how poorly this team has played the last two seasons. They get no flack, no, no, no sympathy from me, from the – the front office on down y'all get no sympathy watching this team has been an embarrassment i can't even let my sons watch the games because they already know what's gonna happen whether we start out with a lead it's gonna get blown whether you win them in the seventh or eighth inning they find ways to lose that's just how this team is even when they broke the streak it didn't feel good the only thing that felt good about them in the net winning losing streak was the fact that they didn't set the record versus the cubs this weekend because we wouldn't have been able to live it down as White Sox fans. So the question is, and shout, again, shout out to Grady Sizemore. He's going to have a sample size of about 40 to 45 games to end this season to show what type of manager he's going to be, uh, maybe for this team or another team in the future. But who? Who should does the White Sox look at for the next coach besides Grady Sizemore? Should it be like a Terry Francona? I know he's a little bit older, but hey, it is what it is. Maybe a David Ross. Now, that would be funny to see David Ross come up to the Chicago White Sox and coach against the team that, that he, he was supposedly rivals with when he won the World Series with the Cubs and then also coaching the Cubs for the last couple of seasons up until he was unceremoniously uh, relieved of his duties last season. That would be so fun to see David Ross come and coach the White Sox after what the Cubs did to him last season. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. And I already know how it would go here in Chicago. People would feel like he's a traitor, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, I think that would be a pretty cool, pretty cool pickup. Um, what about, um, let's see, Skip Schumacher. I see some people talking about online. But a lot of people are saying, hey, uh, what about AJ? AJ Przinsky? That's been the, the, the hot topic. That's been the hot pick. Uh, over the this summer, the last couple of months, it's been picking up steam. We already know people want to see Ozzie Guillen come back. It'd be crazy to see a combination of Ozzie Guillen and AJ Przinsky, two uh, World Series, um, um, two World Series uh, members from the 05 World Series. So I don't know, though. I really don't know. Do, do we uh, live in the bask in the glow of that team and try to start bringing players and coaches from back then back to the White Sox to try to recapture that glory, those glory days? Or do we move on and get somebody else? Um, but it's, I don't know. As long as Jerry Reinsdorf owns this team, I don't think it matters who manages this team. I don't think it matters. I feel like the White Sox are going to be bad as long as they're run like a business instead of a, a ball club. Until they can get somebody in ownership that has a passion for baseball for real, for real, a passion for winning for real, for real, it's just going to be more the same. He's looking at dollar signs. We're looking at wins and losses. And, and unfortunately, we're looking at way less wins than losses these last couple of years. So y'all already know. Let us know down below what y'all think. Who should be the next coach? Should they find bring a Paul Canerco in? Should they bring members from the 2005 squad? To, to look at this team. The AJ Przinsky is the hot pick. He's he's analyzing, I think he's the uh, a commentator, a color commentator 
uh, down in Miami right now. So there's a lot of buzz around him. But again, my pick would be David Ross, if not just for the the, the humor of it. That would be f- doggone hilarious to see David Ross lead this team to respectability next season. Because I feel like the Cubs suffered a little bit of karma for how they did him last year, just based on how this season's been going. They've been struggling to get to 500, trying to keep pace with the wild card race. But nobody has been as bad as the White Sox. And it's almost historically bad. It's, it is historically bad, but not the worst in history because baseball has been around since Jesus. So there are teams from the 1800s that were bad and the early 1900s that were bad. But in modern baseball, this is about as bad as it gets. Now, I know that the Baltimore Orioles have had some bad seasons and so on and so forth, but God, this is brutal. So, yeah, Pedro Grifal earned, I guess, played, coach managed his way into an early vacation. I would have made him stay on the bench until the end of the season, you going down with this ship, and then started my managerial search right after the season. But I guess Chris Getz had to take some of the focus off of him as the general manager, that's usually how it goes in corporate America. Corporate America, you kind of deflect and try to push the problem on the other people and blame other people. But you're the GM, fam. You had an opportunity, several opportunities throughout this season to make the roster better, and you didn't. You didn't. When you traded Dylan Cease, you didn't get much for him. You didn't. So what you gonna do, Chris Getz? Is it gonna be AJ Przinsky? Is it going to be David Ross? Is it going to be somebody else, Don Mattingly? Somebody else. It's going to be an older coach, a younger coach that's into the analytics. We'll see. Let us know what y'all think in the comments section down below. Don't forget to follow the rest of the Chicago sports, the Chi-Town Sports Central family, uh, with the, you know, the Cognac Boys, Chicago Bulls, Bears, Sky, Blackhawks Central, NBA Central. Man, Shy Bulls Podcast, Cognac Boys. <sighs> this has been brutal. This has been rough. It's been rough. And, of course, they had to do this while I was at work. I couldn't even jump on and break the news. But, you know, we got to do the work anyway. So I'm going to holler at you guys, man. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and share. We appreciate all the new subscribers that we've gotten so far this season. And, hey, it's it's not going to stop. Even in the offseason, we're going to stay on top of things as best we can with our own personal life schedules as well. So it's your boy, Big Bro, for Chi-Town Sports Central over here on Chicago White Sox Central. We're going to holler at y'all next time. Owen. You know who don't care about nothing that's happened with the White Sox. Jerry, Mr. Burns, Reinsdorf. We're going to holler at y'all next time. (sighs) Peace.